In this video, we will discuss the new enhancements in CSI Bridge version 25.00. Here are the new items that have been added into CSI Bridge version 25. New high strength steel materials have been added to the Chinese material library, as well as for structural modeling, frame hinge assignment presets including distributed plasticity, nonlinear beam column, as well as user defined options are now available. You can add wall piers that can now be defined and included within a bridge model. Updates to layout lines include circular segment types as well as a new precast box deck section has been included. For bridge design and rating, new California amendments to the Ashto LRFD bridge design specs 8th edition for steel and concrete have been included as well as strength and service cracking for both IRC 112 2020 as well as Ashto LRFD 2020 has been added. New API functions that provide access to the bridge modeler and bridge object functionality as well. Okay, let's get started. First of all, let's take a look at the new frame hinge assignments. We can access that underneath the advanced tab. We'll go to frames, hinges. Here are the new options that have become available. So let's take a look at nonlinear beam column. So this option is intended to be used for most typical beam and column members, which are governed by flexural behavior and expected to yield at one or both ends of the member while maintaining elasticity or nearly elastic behavior at the mid span. And these images here on the right show exactly where the hinge will be assigned to each of the frame elements. Distributed plasticity, this is the new one that's been included. This is intended to be used for frame objects that are expected to have complex yielding behavior over the entire length. For example, nonlinear buckling. Several integration types based upon common quadrature rules are available, which determine the integration points and weights used for the nonlinear hinges along the length of the frame type. So you can see we have a couple different integration types available to the user. For example, five point Gauss Lobato. Because this integration type places hinges at the two ends of the frame objects, it's most suitable for beam and column members in buildings where yielding starts at the end of the elements. So you have the ability to select available hinges that have been predefined as well as seven point options are included here as well. Next for equal spacing, this is similar to the distributed plasticity option. This can be used for frame objects that are expected to have, again, complex yielding behavior over the entire length. But this time the option adds evenly spaced hinges along the length of the frame object, as you can see here on the image on the right. Uh, we have a couple more continuous uh, spring supports. This is intended for piles and grade beams, which are supported by springs at specified intervals and are meshed at the intersection with these supports to facilitate the placement of hinges between each support. Lastly, user define. This gives the user fully manual control over the number, position, and type of hinges assigned to the frame object. Each hinge assignment consists of a hinge property, a location of the hinge along the frame object and an optional hinge length overwrite, which applies to stress strain or fiber hinges. So you have the ability to add a hinge here in this specific form from the auto hinge type. You can select from specific tables, add them, and then apply them to the frame itself. Next, let's take a look how wall piers can now be defined and included within a bridge model. So if we take a look at this model here, under components, if you select from the pull down menu, Bents, and we can modify the bridge bent data. Here under support type, you have the option to include columns, foundation springs. Now you can see wall has been added. We click modify show wall data. You have the ability to define the top and bottom widths, thicknesses, as well as the height, including material property, as well as the foundation type, number of divisions. If we click OK, OK again, then you can see the wall is now being added at the bent location, as you can see here in this model. Next, let's take a look how layout lines can now include circular segment types. If we go to layout, let's take a look at the existing layout line and make some modifications. So we'll increase the end station to 5000. Then we can go to define horizontal layout data. Under the pull down menu, you can see some items have been included, including circular right to station by radius, as well as circular right or left to new bearing at station. 
So if we click on a circle right to station by radius, why don't we make some updates? So we'll add a new station with a specific radius. We'll insert this below and we can add more. And you can see on the bottom, it gives you a little preview as to the updates of the layout line. Next, we'll click on circle left to station by radius. Make some updates to the station and radius values. And you can see the updates showing on the bottom portion of the screen here as well. This is a new feature which allows layout lines to have circular segment types where you can curve the line left or right, defining them at a new bearing at station or a specific radius. So if I click OK, OK again, now you can see this layout line has been included in the model as it refreshes here. Okay, opening a new model, let's take a look at the precast box deck section that has been added. If we go to components, superstructure deck sections, we can add a new section. And under concrete deck on composite girders, you can see precast box girder has now been included. This gives the user the ability to define all the different variables associated with this deck section. As you can see, you have the ability to define the girder gap definition as well in this form. And if you scroll down, you have the option for updating the girder sections, modeling type, as well as left and right overhang data. Also the ability to modify girder force output locations. Here are all the different girders that are included in this specific section. As well as updating material properties, specific frame sections, you can add them here if you'd like as well as modify show load patterns. Okay, let's take a look at bridge design and rating. California amendments to AASHTO LRFD bridge design specs, eighth edition for steel and concrete bridge design and rating requests have been added. So let's take a look. If we take a look at design preferences, you can see for a substructure design code, here are the two new codes that have been included, including IRC 112-2020. Now this is for both steel and concrete. If we take a look at design requests and add a new request and also strength the design of bent columns according to IRC 112 2020 as well as service cracking check of bent columns according to AASHTO LRFD 2020 have been added. So you can see for check type, column strength, column service cracking are now options that are available to the user. You can set station ranges, column selection, the specific stations, as well as resistance. And updates to design request parameters can be updated in this form as well.